What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be ranking all of WWE 2K's video games. Of course, there is not going to be a WWE 2K21 this year, and that is due to WWE 2K20 not being the greatest game. So 2K is taking a break from their annual games this year, but they are making a WWE 2K Battlegrounds game, which is more of an arcade and animated style game compared to their annual realistic games. So today I have all of the previous annual WWE 2K games and we're gonna rank them. Let's get started. Up first is WWE 2K14. It is the first WWE game after THQ went bankrupt, basically meaning that 2K was taking over as the one that was making the WWE games. At first, the online servers were extremely buggy because 2K was using THQ's servers instead of their own. So instead of making and creating their own servers to have the online part on, they had the unmaintained THQ servers being used for the first year for the online. It was extremely glitchy, extremely buggy, and it was not the greatest for playing online. Singer player campaign was called 30 years of WrestleMania, including 45 matches, vintage footage, and legendary wrestlers to use in the game. It was a lot of fun to play the story. The streak mode was where you could defend or attempt to defeat the Undertaker's WrestleMania streak. So it did have a lot of cool modes in it. The online was glitched, but I'm still going to rank it decently high. I'm going to rank it 8 out of 10. I did play a lot of online with the Mafia. However, the main part of the game that I enjoyed was the streak mode and the 30 years of WrestleMania. Next up is WWE 2K15, and it did this year include a 2K showcase modes. The first one is Hustle, Loyalty, Disrespect, which was showcasing the rivalry between John Cena and CM Punk. The other 2K showcase mode was Best Friend, Bitter Enemies, which showcased the rivalry between Triple H and Shawn Michaels. So both 2K showcases were very incredible. Now the PS4 version of the game did include My Career, which I was not able to play because at the time I still had the PS3 version, but the PS3 version included Who Got NXT Mode. And that basically focuses on the only NXT wrestlers that are in the game that year. Adrian Neville, Bo Dallas, Corey Graves, Rusev, and Sami Zayn. So this game here did have a lot of improvements from the prior year. But in my opinion, I believe for the PS3 version, they could have had career mode. It wasn't going to take too much more space on the disc. And they didn't really need to have the Who Got NXT mode. Because it didn't, in my opinion, really matter. This game, because they did that... I'm only going to rank it a 7.5 out of 10. It's still pretty good. I just wish the PS3 version had a career mode in it. Next up is WWE 2K16. This year they had a roster expansion. The last game had 67 wrestlers. This game had 120, which meant it was very more competitive for universe mode. You had a lot more wrestlers to work with. The 2K Showcase mode detailed Stone Cold's career in the Attitude Era, which was very interesting, and it did include Create Arena and Create a Championship. They were returned in this year's game. So I'm going to rank it once again an 8 out of 10. They just had a lot more improvements and things that were returned to the game that I personally used. Next up is WWE 2K17. It had an improved My Career mode with Backstage Brawling. It did not feature a single player story mode in the base game, but it was later added as a DLC with a showcase. So for me, that did suck. I usually buy the WWE games not only to play universe mode, but also to play the career mode, aka showcase mode. And for this year, not to include it, I'm only going to rank it a 6.5 out of 10. The next game is WWE 2K18. This year, they updated a lot more of the mechanics. For example, from previous games, having only six wrestlers in the ring at once in a specific match now allows up to eight wrestlers in the ring at the same time. For example, eight-man matches, tag team matches, money in the bank, battle royales, and royal rumbles. 
So it was a lot more fun having eight wrestlers in the match fight fighting against each other at the same time, as opposed to previous games having only six. They also introduced a new carry system so you could carry your opponent, which in my opinion, I felt was very useful. And also for career mode, it now allows backstage roaming. So the previous game, they improved my career mode with backstage brawling. This year, they had it where you could actually roam backstage on your own, which was very interesting for them to do. This game here, I'm going to rank it a 7 out of 10. The next game is WWE 2K19. And this year, they finally returned the WWE 2k showcase mode i was really thankful for that and this year it focuses on the career of daniel bryan so it wasn't in my opinion the best uh showcase mode that they could have done but it was definitely a very interesting one because not only did it include the career of daniel bryan but it also included a match against john cena in Daniel Bryan's first match back in the early 2000s on Velocity. So it was very interesting that they decided to include that. There's a new Towers mode, which focused on AJ Styles, which meant you had to be AJ Styles and go through about 15 wrestlers, beating them continuously, and be able to finish that whole tower off without losing a match, or you have to restart. So it was very interesting, and they even had a $1 million challenge for that. And also for career mode, they reinvented it with improved story for your created superstar. And your superstar starts off in the indies. So you create your wrestler and instead of starting off right away in NXT or the WWE, you actually start off in the indie scene for wrestling, which was very incredible. And I love that they did it. So this game here, I'm going to rank it an 8.5 out of 10. And the last annual game that WWE 2K has made is WWE 2K20. It was the first game since 2000 not developed by Ukes. So one of their huge developers were not part of this game, which is why there was so many glitches. At launch, the game was deemed broken due to how many glitches and bugs were in the game. It was full of them, and a lot of people couldn't even play the game at the launch. Now, some bugs and glitches were fixed with updates, and a lot of people are still having issues with their game, but WWE 2K is not releasing any more updates. They've already announced that. Create a Championship was added with a later update. It was not at launch. They did have a 2K showcase mode, which included the four horsewomen, Charlotte, Bailey, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks, which, in my opinion, I felt was a lot of fun. WWE Towers mode this year included Roman Reigns, last year was AJ Styles, and this year was a little bit easier to go through. It was a lot more realistic and reasonable, and a lot of fun to do so. And My Career mode featured a male and female wrestler where you had to create both and use both. And you start off in the indies, work your way to the WWE, and then both get inducted in the Hall of Fame the same night, which was awesome. The story was amazing for that. Honestly, for me... Even though the game was broken at launch, all the features were later for me that I loved and the things that I used in the games were 100% fixed. Things like create a championship, custom attires for wrestlers, and the universe mode in my opinion is all fixed or the things that I use at least. So for me, I'm going to rank this game since the things that I use for it are fixed. I'm going to rank it a 7 out of 10. Not the highest. But because it was kind of a broken game, I can't go any higher than 7 out of 10. So as of now, these are all of the annual WWE 2K games that were ever made. Of course, this year, they're not going to be having the annual game due to how much time and effort goes into these games. And since WWE 2K20 was kind of trash, a lot of people hated it. This year, they're taking on the approach of having an arcade-style game, which I'm not a fan of. I like the realistic WWE annual games. So that means this year, since WWE 2K21 is not being made, and the next one is likely going to be 2022, I am going to be able to play WWE 2K20 for a whole nether calendar year. So it does suck that they're not going to be making an annual game this year. For the first time in a long time, they're not continuing the series this year. They're stopping it this year. But they did say they're going to be doing it for 2022. So there's a lot of things they have to fix. A lot of things they have to get right. So I think by having more of an arcade style game take Lou for the annual game, I think people are going to be on board with it. But for me, I'm going to stick with WWE 2K20 because the things for it that I play are 100% fixed. So 
I don't need to get this year's game. I was really hoping to continue the series and having the next annual game, but if they're not going to be making it for another year, I'm just going to play the crap out of WWE 2K20. So comment down below what you guys think of WWE 2K games. I know 20 has a lot of people hating it right now. What do you guys think of that? And out of this list, what do you think is the best WWE 2K game? I'm going to leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.